Aloha all, and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Ball Z Bodokai 3. I'm Paper Mario Guy. In the last episode, we continued Vegeta's story, and we finished up the Namek Saga, and we finished it out pretty well. We didn't run into too many problems, and we defeated Pre Frieza with not relative ease, but um, it was a close battle and everything. So we're going to keep on keeping on, see if we can continue the same sort of pattern in the Cell Saga. Now, the Cell Saga for me is honestly one of my favorite sagas um, for Vegeta. Not so much um, some of the other characters. Like, I like Go... Like, it seems as though certain characters shine in different sagas. Obviously, kid, like, Future Trunks doesn't really have another saga except for the whole Android slash Cell Saga. But I mean, like, as far as, like, Gohan is concerned, I'd say that Gohan really shined out to me in the Cell Saga. Vegeta really shined out to me in the Cell Saga. Goku really shined out to me in, like, the Frieza Saga, and so did Krillin, and so did Piccolo. Um, so, I mean, like, and then there's certain people, and then obviously, like, Tien and Yamcha didn't really have much of a part in the Cell Saga, so they, they shined in the Sand Saga, and they, I don't know, there's just different parts of the, the stories, um, that, like, I just like better, and, I mean, that's just, that's just, people come to expect that. Um, here we unlock Super Saiyan, and, um, for me, Vegeta's is, like, the Cell Saga, he does a really good, great job in the Cell Saga, like, he's really cocky, really arrogant, it's really, a lot of the defining things about him that have been, s like, set, been set up previously in his story, oh, oh my god, indigestion, of course, um, all come together in, um, in the Cell Saga, in my opinion, and then in the Boo Saga, it's, like, there, but it's not, yeah, I'm, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to describe that. Anyway, we're looking for Sensu Beans. Um, but I mean, uh, like, yeah, that, I mean, there's a, like, Vegeta just, he has one of those things, and I mean, it's part of the reason why, like, Vegeta is actually the person, if you were to blame fault on any one person, you would blame it on Vegeta as to why there were so many problems, because Vegeta, if you remember back in the series, was manhandling semi-perfect cell, like, absolutely manhandling, and we're gonna edit our skills real quick, so I'm gonna hold my thought, we're gonna put on Super Saiyan, and, um, I'm gonna keep, we got a power on, just so, in, just until I finish maxing out my attack, so we're just gonna put on Super Saiyan and go from there. And there we go. But, um, yeah, if you remember, like, Vegeta just manhandled Semi-Perfect Cell, and he could've killed him, and he could've destroyed him and everything, but he didn't. He let him go, and then he became, like, Perfect Cell, and he just, like, really, really messed Vegeta up and everything. So... You know, if you were to, if you were to put blame on one person for all, all the people who died and like the the turmoil that was placed on um, uh, Earth, you could you could technically blame it on Vegeta because he did have a, a major part in in all that. Anyway, we have a battle against Seventeen, which really doesn't make too much sense to me considering Vegeta never fights Seventeen, at least to my knowledge. Um. He, he never actually fights 17. He fights 18, obviously. Um, that was a pretty big battle. I mean, you really realize... I mean, I think that was one of the things... Like, defeating Vegeta... I mean, a lot of a lot of the bad guys have defeated Vegeta. And I think the reason why Vegeta is defeated so often in the series is not so much to be like, oh yeah, Vegeta's a, like a weakling. It's to build up the enemy character. Because it's just like, Vegeta up until... Um, up until the, the, the Android Saga is considered, like, one of the strongest, if not the second strongest fighter out of the entire bunch of them. So to see him defeated as easily as he was by Android 18, you really understand, like, just how serious everything is. So, I think that's honestly why they had, um, Vegeta fight him, and, uh... I don't know, I think that was, I think that was an excellent setup on, um... Just like the like on, on the writer's point of view, because it's just like, yeah, you could have had Goku still there and everything, but it would have been a completely different atmosphere if if Goku was there, because more more than likely Goku wouldn't have lost. 
um, if he was like full health and everything. And then Vegeta, like I said, just gets decimated. There's really no other way to put it. He gets decimated, and so does everybody else. So I don't know. It was just a really. I, I thought it was a really well executed uh, way to advance the plot as well as get everybody like in the zone. Like this is this could be the end. So. And then obviously Vegeta like like rebounded and everything. But I mean there was our fight with 17, two ranks up, so only one more for uh to be able to finish out the attack and everything. But um that was a decent fight. Um it was kind of easy, which um actually brings me to my next point. Um and I'll talk about it while we're fighting Android 18. Now, this is the fight that was in the the series that was really, um... Like... Like, when people think about the androids, I, I think, honestly, they think of this fight, Vegeta versus Android 18, more than anything. Because, like, they did have, a, like, a somewhat decent part. But, I mean, besides Android 18 and Vegeta's fight, there weren't too many androids fights... And when they did, they just decimated. Like, they took out pretty much all of the Z fighters in seconds after Vegeta. Um, after, yeah, after Vegeta fell, they just took everyone down, like, so quickly, and it was ridiculous. But what I was saying is, like, that was a pretty easy fight, and I don't think that I had many problems with uh, fighting Android 17 right there. And it brings me to the one thing that I've noticed. Since I've begun LPing, I haven't gotten too much negative response. Like, I think there was a, like, I mean, I've gotten a, a, a tad bit of uh, people saying, hey, maybe you shouldn't do post-commentary that much, which I can completely understand, because I'm, like, like, some, like, especially in Strikers, there was, like, like three or four episodes that were post commentary and when you have like live the whole time and then it just switches to post that is a little like weird so i can definitely see that but really the only other complaint that i see and it's really only been in this game although there was a few comments in pokemon stadium was the fact that apparently i'm bad at this game now i think i'm pretty good at this game i think that i'm a decent player at this game and if i'm not i guess whatever but what I think people fail to realize is A, that I'm playing this, like, especially Vegeta's story, I'm playing on Z3, the hardest difficulty in the game, and I'm defeating my enemies with relative ease. And one of the comments recently, and I'm sure it was just a troll trying to get, like, an, a, a response out of me, and I'm not, like, angry about it, I was laughing and everything, and maybe I shouldn't give the, tr like, the troll so much attention, but he pretty much admitted to me that he would beat me, like, he said, wow, you suck at this game, and I would beat you so fast because I would just spam the same move over and over again, like, that's pretty much what he said, he, he, he said that I sucked at this game and that he would kill me so fast because he would just use the same move on me over and over again, and it just sparked just all these different things in my head, and it's just like, those are the people that ruin fighting games on Xbox Live for me. Because, like I've stated in the past, I have Xbox. And while I love, like, the shooters online, and I love talking online just while I'm playing another game, or if there's, like, a sports game online, I mean, those, like, pretty much every form of game is just, like, they're just, um, like, they're fun online, and they're, they, they run smoothly. And for the most part, you find some really good competition on there. Excuse me. Um, and then you get to the fighting games, and it's just awful. It's awful. You just have these people who spam and spam and spam over and over again. The same exact, like, kicking or punching combo. And, like, they'll hover over you once you knock down. So right when you get up and you can't counter them, you, um, they'll just keep on, like, braiding you. And that's the type of thing that pisses me off and makes me not really enjoy a game as much. And it actually made me contemplate selling Soul Calibur 4. Um, but I think I'll continue this conversation in the next episode because I do not have time to start this next uh, thing. I don't know if it's a fighter or not, but I don't have time for it either way. So, um, for now, I'm going to sign off. I am Paper Mario Guy of the Ninja Bros. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you in part 51, I think it might be. Yeah, until then, see you later.